In this lecture here, I want to talk about the shapes that different distributions can take on. So in a previous lecture, we've learned um, about histograms. And when you have a data set, um, the shape that a histogram takes on tells you a lot about the um, uh, the characteristics of that of that either that sample or that population. All right, so in the next few slides, what I have here is I have five common shapes that histograms um, take on, or five common shapes that we'll see in this class. All right, so the first one is what's called a normal distribution, and it looks kind of like this. It starts low, gets high, 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 then once it gets to the apex here, it goes low, 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 low. And it looks like a bell, like if you superimpose a bell curve on it. This is a normal distribution. And we're going to study this distribution in, in a lot of detail in the... Uh, in the coming weeks. But one of the main properties of a normal distribution that's really relevant right now or to take away now is what we see here is that most data is centered or the most data occurs right around the center of the, di the data and as you get away from the center there's less and less observations when you're above and less and less observations up down below. All right, two other types of distributions we could have are called skew distribu skewed distributions. And this one looks like a normal curve, and then it has a tail that shoots off to the right. This is called a right skewed distribution. And this one here, it looks like there's a normal curve here, but then off down to the left, we have this tail. This is called left skewed. Uh, let me give you an example of something that might be right skewed. If you were to draw a histogram for the number of hours of television people watch per day, uh, you know, hours here, frequency up here you'd see that most people watch you know maybe between one and four hours of tv a day and then there's some people out there super tv watchers who get um who watch eight nine ten eleven hours of tv a day but there's not as many of them left skewed it's the same thing except opposite there's um there's more observations down by this end and then there's a tail that shoots off to the left you know something like this might be the hours of sleep people get per night you know the majority of individuals in a population or in a sample if you were to take one i don't know maybe get between six and ten hours of sleep a night and then there's some people very few who just only need a couple two three hours of sleep a night and then there's other two types um, we can have what's called a bimodal distribution looks like two normal curves stuck together and then something like a multimodal distribution. And this kind of just like up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, and there's, you can think of different examples for both of these. Um, but these are just, when you see a distribution that looks like this, this is how, what we'll call them or what we'll classify them as. All right, so what I want to do in this quick example here is I just want to do an example about um, reading a histogram, all right, or how you get, what type of information you can pull from this histogram here. And so this histogram above shows a level of cholesterol in milligrams per deciliter of 200 people. So this histogram shows um, the, the cholesterol levels of 200, let's just say, randomly selected people. And we're using the lower limit cutoff. So this group right here goes from the values 195 to under 200. This group here goes from 200 to under 205. This group here goes from 205 to 210, to under 210, and so on. Okay, so you have to be careful here when you, get, when you see histograms because this one here you have to ask yourself is what type of histogram is this? Well, it's a relative frequency histogram. Okay, so these are not counts here. Okay, these are frequencies, relative frequencies, excuse me. Okay, so the first question is how many people have a level of cholesterol between 205 and 210? Well, here's 205, here's 210. It's represented by this this green bar right here. Well, this green bar, we go up to the top, scroll over. It looks like 0.2 um, a proportion of the of the sample, or 20%. So we have to figure out what 20% of the 200 people is. Well, to figure that out, let me just load up my calculator here to help. What you would do is you would take 0 0.2 times 200 and it would be 40 people. Okay, so this first one here is 40 people. Okay, the next question here. How many people have a level of cholesterol less than 205? So here's 205, so you want to be less than that. So it's this bar and this bar. So it looks like it's 0.1 plus 0 0.05, which would be 0 0.15. So for this one here, you would take the 200 people, times it by 0 0.15, and you would get 30 people. 
All right, now part C, now it switches it up. What percentage of people have a level of cholesterol more than 215? So here's 215. We want to be more than that. So it's this bar here and this bar here. So it's asking for the percentage. So that's 0.25 for this bar, 0.05 for this bar. Well, that's 0.25 plus um, 0.05 gets me 0.30 or 30%. Now finally, how many people have a level of cholesterol between 205 and 220? So that would be this green, this blue, and this green here. So 205 is 0.20, plus we're going to add it to this group here. That's 0.35, plus I want to go to 220 to this group here, which is 0.25, which would be 0.8 times the 200 people, and it looks like there's 160 people. All right, so that's how you would just read information from these histograms. All right, so I want to talk now, we've been talking about population and sample data. Um, how, what do we use? What's the difference or what is what do we use sample data for? Okay, so we know that population data is the values of a variable from an entire population and sample data are the value of a variable for a sample of a population. All right, so the distribution of a population data is called the population distribution or the distribution of the variable and the distribution of sample data is called the sample distribution. Okay, so what what how does the sample distribution or what does the sample distribution help tell us or estimate for us about the population distribution? Well, imagine you were to, you have um, all the households in the United States, okay? And you were able to take all the households and figure out the number of people that live in those households or the household size, okay? So this would be the population distribution. So, you know, it looks like the majority of households have two people in it you know, one or two people in it, and then as you get more and more people, there's less households. This looks like a right skewed distribution, okay? But you gotta ask yourself, is it really, really possible to contact every single household in the United States and ask them how many people live there? I mean, the census tries to do it, but even the census isn't 100% correct, okay? So, you know, some people, no matter how hard the government tries, they can't get in contact with them. Okay, so what you would do is you want to estimate the population distribution by, by taking samples of households in the United States. And what these six histograms represent are six different samples. And if you look at the sample data that you collect, okay, the histograms look pretty close to the population distribution, but they're not exactly the same. Like even this one isn't exactly this one, okay? So this one looks pretty close. This one kind of looks like this one. This one kinda, 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 kinda. But what we're seeing here is, is that the sample distributions, while they don't 100% get it right, they all do a pretty good job estimating what the population distribution looks like. So a sample distribution, what we're gonna be using them for is we use them to help estimate what the population distribution looks like. Okay, so for a simple random, Sample, the sample distribution approximates the population distribution. And one thing that you're going to see later on in the class is, is that the larger the sample size, the, the more observations you have in a sample, the better the approximation tends to be.